If you want to create a command line tool, you can do so with Dino's standard library. There are dozens of stable libraries with helpful utility functions that can cover a lot of the basics when working with JavaScript and the web. The standard library also works in multiple runtimes and environments like Node.js and the browser. So we're going to create a command line tool here, and then we're going to compile it so it can be used on a number of different platforms as an executable. So in our main TS file over here, let's go ahead and parse these arguments. Remember, we can always grab them from dino.args. We could console log this. We could say, welcome to location. And now if I run dino main.ts, and then I provide the name of a ski resort like Aspen, that's going to plug that into the string. Now let's go ahead and install one of those standard libraries. We're going to run dino add JSR at standard slash CLI. So let's run dino add JSR colon at standard CLI. This is going to install this into our project so we could make use of some of these helpful functions. The helpful function that we'll use here is called parse args, and we'll grab that from JSR at standard CLI parse arguments. So check this out, parse args, and we'll pass in that argument. All right, so let's go ahead and console log this. We'll get rid of that zero as well. So let's go ahead and try this. We're going to run dino main.ts dash h, and we'll say hello. And this is going to add this to our little object here. All right, so that's working as expected. Now our app is going to be a ski resort information app. So we want to populate our app with a little bit of data to start. We're going to create a value called resorts, and this is an object with a few different keys. So we'll say elevation, snow, expected snowfall. Then let's just copy and paste these so that we can move a little more quickly. We'll say Aspen, 7945, snow, packed powder, expected snowfall, 15. And then let's add one more of these. We'll say Veil 8120, and then we'll say Expected Snowfall 25. Okay, so we have a few different resorts here. Ultimately, we want to be able to run our app with a command line argument that's going to provide the resort name and then have that CLI tool return the information. So let's go ahead and pass another object in here to parse args. Here we're going to define an alias. So we're going to say, if I pass the R flag, we want to have it assume it means resort. And then let's also use the default here. We'll say default resort is Whistler. From here, what we can do is we're going to say const resort name equals args.resort. So then we'll grab the resort with resorts, resort name. So that's what's going to help us do that lookup. We'll fix that type error in a second. But in the meantime, let's add a little string here to our console log. We're gonna say resort, resort name, elevation, resort dot elevation feet. Then we'll say snow conditions, resort.snow, and expected snowfall. Let's go ahead and try to run this. We're going to run dino main.ts r aspen. That gives us a printout of all of those details. Let's also try to run this without any arguments. That should give us Whistler because we're using the default there. Same goes for our full name. So we could say main.ts resort veil, and that should give us that answer as well. Now, 
if I tried to run this with a resort that's not there, let's say Bachelor, there's an error. So that's kind of an ugly one. It's hitting this moment where it's trying to parse that out and it can't find it. So we could make this a little nicer by saying if there's no resort in our data set, let's run a console error resort resort name not found try whistler aspen or veil and then we'll hop out of that process with a dino dot exit okay let's try that one more time same argument this is going to give us that error message nice okay so this here isn't looking so good we can look at the problems here in typescript it's telling us that this implicitly has an any type you can look up more about this error but i'll show you how to fix this one what we can do is we can say args.resort as key of type of resorts so what this has done is it's going to extract the value of args.resort and it's going to assert that there is a valid key inside of the data. Okay, let's take this one more step. We're going to say if args.help will console log, and then we're going to give our users a little message to say, hey, this is actually how you use this if they do happen to ask for help at any moment. So we'll say usage, this is the ski CLI, resort, resort name, H is help, and then R or resort, name of the ski resort, and the default is Whistler. Let's also adjust the alias here. Here we'll say help is H. Okay, so that'll work just as it did before. Let's also make sure that we call the Dino exit here so that we jump out of the process as soon as we're done with that. Great. Let's try to run the dash dash help. That's going to give us that information. So one quick little thing I'd like to add here. Let's log our results here in color. Dino has support for CSS using this percent C syntax. And so what this will do is it'll say, take all this text and apply the style that I pass in as the second argument to the console log. So here we could say color blue. Now, if we try to run this again, so we'll say Dino main.ts r veil, that's going to log everything in color. How cool is that? So we're feeling pretty good about this. I want other people to be able to enjoy the app too. So with Dino, compiling this tool into an executable is pretty easy. And as you might imagine, the command for running this is Dino compile. So what we're gonna do here is type Dino compile and then the name of our script. This is going to compile this to the project as an executable here. So my Dino project. Now we can run dot slash my Dino project dash dash resort Aspen. And that's going to run this as an executable. So this is really great for me. But what happens if I want to share this to other platforms? So all you would need to do to do that is you would type Dino compile again. You'd pass in a target flag for where you want to compile to. And then let's say we wanted to compile it for Windows. We'd type x86 underscore 64 PC Windows MSVC output ski CLI Windows main.ts. So that's for Windows. Let's go up again. And this time we're going to do this for Mac OS. So I am using a Mac, but let's say you are not, you can always compile to that output. We'd say 86, 64, Apple, Darwin. 
And there we go, we are compiled to Mac OS. And then one more time, let's say we're compiling for Linux. We will replace the Apple information. To see all of the options for compiling your apps, you can check out the documentation here. There are a lot of different flags that you can use for your own specific use cases. So to recap, we always have access to this standard library that we can take advantage of with all these different helpful functions. If we wanted to create a command line utility like we've done here, we always have access to the Dino global namespace for these arguments. We can parse the arguments using the parse args function from the standard library CLI package, and we can run a compile for all platforms so that our app can be consumed anywhere.